eating count as doing nothing. I think a leisurely relaxed meal would qualify, but the preparation does involve some work. Fortunately, you won't have to slave for hours over the pots if you take Yubika's advice with this easy to prepare menu. I spend as much time wrapping a gift as I do choosing it. A beautifully wrapped gift creates much excitement and can only sweeten a surprise. I've been wondering why we don't wrap our food more often and that's exactly what I'm going to be doing in the kitchen today. On the menu, a savoury potato pancake, a wrapped pilau rice and for dessert, a spiced apple roll. Let's get cooking. This is quite an interesting pancake. I'm starting out by fermenting the pancake batter. This is my grandmother's recipe. And what's interesting is it's a sweet fermented pancake with a spicy potato filling. To get the fermentation going, fresh yeast going into the warm water, add some salt and two teaspoons of sugar. Lightly stir. And what we're doing is just making sure that the yeast is active. I've got a cup of self-raising flour here, maize meal, rice flour and semolina. You don't need to sift these ingredients, you just want to combine these ingredients and work them together so they're evenly distributed. Let's have a look at the yeast. I can see a fair bit of activity now. What you don't want is to make up the batter with inactive yeast. Pour that in and use a whisk to lightly work the ingredients together. You can see the mixture does foam up quite quickly and it's already quite frothy. That's all we need to do for now. I'm going to leave this aside and get started with the kima palau. Kima is mince. You could use beef mince or chicken mince for this recipe. I'm using lamb today. I'm starting out with some sunflower oil going into the pan. I've preheated this pan already. A bay leaf and cinnamon stick, some cumin seeds. They start to hiss and sizzle when they hit the hot oil to this chopped onion. A teaspoon and a half of coarse salt and fry the onions until they're golden. Two green chilies, you could add more if you like, and ginger and garlic paste. Going in on the side of the pan, stir the ginger and garlic paste, chili and onion together, add the lamb mince. I'm stir frying the lamb mince. We eat a fair bit of spicy food. So I've toned down the spice in this kima palau. I've cooked off the moisture in the meat. Now add some garam masala. You could also use any other aromatic spice to the mince. Add some frozen peas. They add a lovely pop of color. You could use butter beans in this as well. We'll leave them out entirely. Season with black pepper. Just a touch of coriander going on top. Turn off the heat and while that's cooling, a quick tidy up and let's get ready to wrap. To wrap this pilau, I've got three sheets of buttered phyllo in a tagine dish, brown onion, a little sprinkling going over the phyllo, cooked rice going in. Layer that evenly over the base, lay the lamb mince over the rice and scoop that over. You can leave the bay leaf, cinnamon stick and chilli out of this. That's the last of the mince going into the phyllo, the rest of the rice going on top. I'm using basmati rice for this. You could always use brown rice if you like. More brown onion to cover that rice. These are crispy fried white onions. I love using lots of coriander. A little bunch of fresh thyme. I keep that in the center. It's quite easy to remove once the pilau is baked and another teaspoon of fragrant spice. Brush the filet with melted butter and work quite lightly. You don't want to tear the pastry. It is quite delicate. Listen the filo. I'm just going to scrunch this up like so. Pleat the filo together and then coil it around to create a flour. Place that on top of the rice. Repeat the process until the pilau is covered. Dab a bit of the melted butter. This is to make sure it bakes evenly gold in color. Bake this off in a preheated oven at 180 degrees Celsius until golden brown. The pancake batter has fermented and I'm using a transparent bowl for this and you can see the bubbles along the side of the bowl as well. Some melted butter going into the batter, sugar and desiccated coconut. Use the whisk 
It does seem quite thick at first, but once the sugar dissolves, the batter does become a little more runny. The batter is complete. All I need to do now is cook this off in a hot pan, but first I'm going to start with the potato filling. For that, some sunflower oil going into a preheated pan, mustard seeds going into the hot oil, add some cumin seeds, stir that around a bit, onions going into the hot oil, a teaspoon of salt and some curry leaves. Let's add some garlic, stir that through. Red chilli powder now going in, work that in and add the potatoes. This is also something my grand made if anyone was going on a road trip because potatoes are quite delightful even when they're eaten cold. Garam masala and a touch of coriander, just a pinch of turmeric. Stir for a few seconds and then pour in some water. That's all you need to do. Simmer these potatoes until they're tender. And while that's simmering, let's finish up on the pancakes. I've greased this pan with nonstick spray, a little butter going in, two scoops of this batter. It's going to be quite a thick pancake. Let it set for a while and then just use the ladle to smear it around a bit. A little more butter going in around the edges. Using a spatula again, loosen the pancake from the pan. You have to scrape quite gently to make sure it doesn't break. There we have it almost there. That one's perfect. Scrape again, lift up and stack. A quick tidy up and time to get started on the spiced apple roll. For the spiced apple roll, I've got buttered phyllo pastry on the counter. The filling, I've started that already by simmering some Granny Smith apples with some saffron and a pinch of cinnamon as well. Working from the side closest to me, spoon the apples onto the pastry. You want a skinny row of apples, not too thick, otherwise it's going to break the coil. Almonds going on top. I've lightly roasted these already. I love cardamom, especially when it's paired with saffron. It's really, truly memorable. Black pepper going on top. Fold over the sides. I'm going to lift up and roll this. It does break a bit. It's quite a delicate pastry. Don't worry too much. It's going to look beautiful when it's done. Butter going over, just a touch. Helps those layers brown up beautifully. Roll over again. A little more butter. And once more. That's perfect, done. Slice the coil. I do this so I get even pieces of the roll. And using another sheet of phyllo, I've doubled it up this time. Brush with butter again. And re-roll. Fold the edges under the roll. Brush again with butter. That's our wrapped spiced apple roll. To finish up, some of those toasted almonds going on top. Bake this in a hot oven, 180 degrees Celsius, until golden brown. These spiced apple rolls are still warm, they're golden and beautiful. To finish up, a touch of icing sugar going over, just dust lightly. To serve the spiced apple roll, I've made some caramel sauce by combining caramel spread and fresh cream. I've heated that and mixed it until smooth. And just before serving, scoop a dollop of that caramel sauce. You don't want to do this too early or this could get quite soggy. And there we have it. As you can see, food can be presented as a beautifully wrapped gift too. Secret ingredients like love, joy and happiness are wrapped into these dishes to create the perfect meal. From me, it's a wrap.